Alan here at Urban Arcade and this is my PlayStation 1 or PS1 random stories. Now this is a bit of a weird one considering I never really cover consoles. This one in particular is a very big thing. This is the PlayStation 1. This is what started everything. This is what started story based games. Games where you could relate to characters. Games that would take you ages to complete. Where you started to age playing them. Well especially if you're a kid going into your teenage years. It's not going to be in any particular order or anything like that, but I was just thinking about it recently, playing new games. Nothing really shocks me anymore and I was starting to wonder why. Why does everything seem like I've seen it before? I remember very well the early 90s. Arcades ruled the world. That's all I wanted to do was go into an arcade, insert a coin and play a game. Preferably Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat. And then we got our own console, so it sort of defeated the object of an arcade playing Street Fighter 2 and Mortal Kombat on a Super Nintendo or a Sega Mega Drive. But I still preferred it, nothing could beat the feeling of an arcade. Going in there using actual money and if you lose you had to go home afterwards with nothing. You earned nothing from that apart from playing a game. Paying to play is sort of the same thing really as buying a game. You buy the game and you play it. And if anything it was probably a little cheaper back then. But games on the Sega Mega Drive and the SNES were my comfort zone. They made me feel safe. They were like interactive cartoons. 2D based games, side scrollers, beat em ups. That's what I loved. I played them with friends. You'd go to a friend's house with a game and if you were lucky they'd have a console that you owned. Most of the time they did. So you'd bring over Street Fighter 2, someone would have a SNES or someone would own Street Fighter 2 on a console say like the Sega Mega Drive. And that was nice. Everyone played games with each other, in front of each other, with each other. You could wind each other up, it was great. And then I knew there was virtual reality. That's what it seemed like at the time. It seemed very adult, very scary, something I didn't want to get into. It's very complex. Too much for my little child mind to handle at the time anyway. And what I mean by that is games started to take on that 3D look. I knew the Sega CD was around and heard the Sega Saturn was around the corner. I didn't want any involvement with it. Mainly because I knew it would be too much for me and my parents wouldn't have been able to afford it. So I sort of given up hope before I even started. But don't get me wrong, I was really happy. I would sit there playing Aladdin and The Lion King and Sonic the Hedgehog and Super Mario Brothers. That's what I liked doing. It was still fun. I never wanted it to end or change. I thought change was a bad thing. I thought that'd only make it worse. Too expensive, too hard to get hold of. I thought it was going to get worse. So I was slightly worried. I guess the same thing as wanting to be a kid forever. You know you think that at the time. Well I kind of sort of felt like that too. And with gaming. And I'd stopped playing with toys completely. Every now and then I'd get the Games Master magazine. And I noticed it started to sort of shy away from the older consoles. I started seeing Sega CD, Sega Saturn, PC games, 3D games, virtual reality. It was very adult and it seemed like it was getting more aimed at solely adults. And it really put me off. I only bought this magazine every now and again just to see games that were coming out or see little clips, see if there was another Mortal Kombat coming out, but that was about it. Am I about to be left behind playing old stuff that no one plays anymore, no one talks about? I also used to watch this show called Bad Influence and that was on in the early 90s and it started to show the newer consoles, people playing them, what they were like and that's where I got my first glimpse of the Sony PlayStation and I remember thinking wow look at that. It plays on CDs. That was always a weird thing. CDs, when we were kids, you were scared to touch them. You didn't want to because they were made for adults. The adults had a CD collection. They were expensive, they were shiny, and you could damage them. And if you can relate to when, in the 90s, you went to your mum's stereo or your mum and dad's stereo and they had a CD collection. It was like, oh no, don't touch the CDs. Cassette players, fine, but don't touch the CDs. You were like, why is that? So you always had this kind of fear. Well I did anyway, everyone I knew that had parents with a CD player, a stereo, they were always scared of you going near their CD collection. They always had them up high or in a cabinet. Like it was something they were very proud of, something very expensive. Again, something very adult. 
and now this was going to be what my games were. Yeah, as you can see, it was already looking bad. Not long after that, the PlayStation was released. Kids in my school had it, and it was always like, oh, I know a friend, he has a PlayStation, and everyone would look at that kid saying, a PlayStation, and we would see this person, the PlayStation owner, and think, wow, you've got a PlayStation. How do you deal with all that stress? You know, the adult console, how can you, a kid, deal with that? That is so scary. This was the kind of politics that went around at school playtime. Yeah, it was very weird. Gaming talk really changed. And I thought I'm never going to be able to get hold of one of these. A few months later, my cousin got one. My cousin's parents were quite fortunate. They had good jobs. And he got one. And it was always like, oh, he's spoiled. He's got a PlayStation. You've got a Sega. And I was like, oh, yeah. And then I started to think, well, I'm happy with this. I don't want a PlayStation. Deep down, of course I did. Of course every kid did. Because it started to get more widespread. Everyone started talking about it. A lot more. And then I would ask friends, what are you playing? And they would come out of a weird name and say it was on the PlayStation. A game I'd never heard of. And I'd be like, oh, right. And they would say, how about you? And I'd be like, oh, uh, well, I'm playing Sonic and Knuckles on the Sega Mega Drive. And they'd be like, Sega Mega Drive? Do people still play that? I was like, well, don't you own one? It's like, no, I haven't had one for ages. I play everything on the PlayStation. I was like, oh, right, yeah. Uh, the, the PlayStation. Yeah, well, that's something I'm never going to own, so forget about it. I wasn't upset that I didn't own it, but I started to notice that. Like being an outsider. But it was still something, technically, I knew I couldn't get. One time I come home, I start talking to my parents about, have you heard about this PlayStation console? And my dad was like, of course, your cousin has one. I was like, oh yeah, maybe we could go up and play it. And it was like, yeah, you'd go up and have an event because consoles were shared. You know, and that's what it felt like. Gaming was an event. You would sit down with family. Everyone would play the same console. Everyone would have a go each. And it wasn't yours, it was the family's. You know, we didn't have our own TVs in our bedrooms. We played them in the living room. They were too expensive to have in your own room. And I remember telling them how important they were, how great they were, and what you could do with them. I didn't think anything would come of that conversation, but I was just speaking to my dad and he said, yeah, I played one, because my dad was an engineer and used to repair stuff at people's houses, mainly television, so when he would be there, he would see some of these consoles, and he would have a go on them, because my dad was into gaming. We used to play Street Fighter together and Mortal Kombat. It was him that first allowed me to go into the arcades. He had the interest in getting Mortal Kombat on the SNES, so I started to think, oh, well, it's good that he's showing some interest, but hey, you know, that's fine. I continue to go about school life, drawing, enjoying myself, and enjoying childhood, and playing about sometimes I enjoyed school. A few months had passed since our conversation. I started swapping games about with kids in school because no one was interested in what they had. Sometimes they give me two or three games for one, because it didn't really matter anymore. Sometimes kids were selling them in school. It was like it was over. Those consoles were long gone, no longer talked about history and I still liked them I still do now even I come home to my parents talking about getting a PlayStation I was in shock real shock I said us us getting a PlayStation really yes Alan really we want to get one but we'll have to share it you know it'll be all of ours not just yours because I had my own Sega Mega Drive and the Super Nintendo was the shared console we all played Street Fighter together and I said, oh, really? Oh, wow, I, I can't believe this. Um, you know, when are you getting it? And they said they're going to order it from a catalogue, a way they could pay it back on a monthly basis. It was the only way we could ever afford such an extravagant item. So I was like, okay, what, what, what games are we getting? Thinking it would be like a new Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter. Because at the intro of Street Fighter 2, the movie, I remember seeing a little clip of Mortal Kombat 3, and it looked like it did in the arcade. And I was like, oh my god, wow, I'd have an arcade in my house. That'd be amazing, that'd be brilliant. Oh god. And they said, we're going to get this game. And I was like, oh, what's this? I said, uh, this, this woman with the big boobies. I was like, wow. Uh, Tomb Raider? What's that about? That sounds a bit strange. No, I've heard about this game, sure. But we're going to get this? Tomb Raider? Us? This isn't the kind of game to win to, is it? Surely. We're into side-scrollers. Now I'd heard kids talk about Lara Croft, and I always found it weird how they mentioned featuring, like she was a real person. And there wasn't really many ways of doing much research for things like that at the time. So I just assumed she was some random celebrity that got famous because of her big boobs, and, you know, she ended up on a game cover. But that's what I thought anyway, because I started to see her more and more. Don't forget I did read the game's master magazines. 
Without any notice, a few weeks have passed, I come home from school, and wow, I see this console. I see the PlayStation and the box next to it. I was in complete shock. We finally have a PlayStation. It's sitting there with that futuristic controller and CDs next to it. The first game we got was Tomb Raider, and I was so surprised that I'm about to play this futuristic game with real people in it. I remember sticking it on and I couldn't handle it. I remember the first place I went to as well. I remember running around in the caves and I went to Lara's home and I killed her in the swimming pool. My mum was really shocked that I did that. How could you do that? You just killed a real person. And I felt bad. I felt really bad and scared. I thought I've just killed someone. And then you load it back up and she's alive. But it didn't make me feel nice because these people moved so real. They didn't look pixelated to me. They looked real. Shortly after, we got Mortal Kombat Trilogy and Tekken, and I played the hell out of them. And another thing that came with the PlayStation was a demo disc called Demo 1. It would show you games. Do you know I thought it was a demo full of other games? Because everything took long for me to complete. I'd never really completed that many games, so I just thought, wow, I've got a disc full of games. It's going to take me forever. I didn't know what a demo was, and I remember inserting the disc thinking, Oh my god, this intro is crazy. This is the futuristic stuff I was talking about. I called the PlayStation at the time a magic box, a CD player, expensive discs. The games were expensive. These were jewelry, that's what it felt like. And it was in my living room, and I'm holding that controller. I was so shocked. And one thing I noticed from the start till now, and I always get this feeling, whenever I played anything on the early PlayStation 1 cycle, I had a fear. A lot of them were scary. I found the games and music to be scary. And it's only recently I started to realise why that was. One thing that frightened me, and this may sound stupid, was the music. Sound effects and music. Reason being is because playing on the Sega Mega Drive and the SNES, most of the music was very cartoonish. And now we've got stereo sound. You know, we've got the same kind of music you would have on a CD or on a film but now it's in the game because it can run off a CD and that really threw me that did you know hearing people scream or actual talking in a game that frightened me you know I, I wasn't used to it and early PlayStation 1 games the characters when they made human movement it was it wasn't very fluid it was really robotic and that used to scare me. That scared me quite a lot. I remember playing Abe's Odyssey and this was better than any film at the time. That little opening cinematic that you got. And again, it was a 2D side scroller. But on the PlayStation it looked better, you could do more, the graphics were better, the sound was better. I was so scared of it. And that T-Rex. Oh my god. Didn't that terrify you? That music? and the nice soothing Manta tech demo. You could control these as well, that was what was so nice. I used to just leave this on in the background and do my homework or draw. It was just something I did. I did little weird things like that, which I still sort of do now. Sometimes I leave Tomb Raider 3 on in the background on the London level and I like the, the sound, the city sound. And it's at night and it's raining, you see the moon. I don't know, I've always been kind of strange like that thinking about it. At the time I was in actual shock. I was shocked by seeing such movement that I would never experience. I was in the game. I weren't seeing them from a sideways perspective. You know, I was holding the gun. I was running behind them. It was hard for me to get around. And it's not just because, I used to think at the time it's because I was artistic. That I'd, I would draw and I would see things different to other people. And maybe that's why it was so hard for me to get my head around these movements. I would notice little details, but it's not that. I think everyone shared the same feelings, because it was completely new. It's like whenever I play a new game now, it doesn't give me the same feelings I had back then. You know, I don't think the same, and I think, oh, well, okay, this is coming out, I'm looking so forward to it, and it comes out, and I'm like, meh. Yeah, it's alright. Nothing special. And I think, why don't I get that no more? You know, am I stuck in the past? Do I only like retro games? No, it's not. It's because the PlayStation was the first time I'd seen this. You know, and games started getting more advanced. The graphics started getting better on the PlayStation. But then I would always reflect back to the older games, playing Crash Bandicoot. Oh, still, even to this day, that is so amazing. Playing Final Fantasy. The music on these games, on the early PlayStation 1 games, are so nostalgic. It really brings it back to me. 
I would love going into the shop to buy a, a magazine, the official PlayStation magazine, because you got to try out games, and just having a demo full of some games you could try out was enough for me, because I would never experience that as a kid with the Sega Mega Drive or SNES. We didn't have emulators. We had consoles that we played with each other. You know, We didn't have what people have now on the Play Store or the App Store, where you could download tons of games for free and play them or buy them. There's so many games to choose from. You could sit there with a tablet or your phone all day, downloading games, playing them, uninstalling them, you name it. You could do it all day long. We didn't have that. You know, we were lucky of what we had. And I loved that. There was no internet to check everything whenever you wanted. And that was nice. Films took half a year to come out after seeing them in the cinema. You know, Games came out complete. You didn't have to install a massive patch. There wasn't tons of issues. It wasn't incomplete. They felt polished. You had this nice, big, plastic jewel case with your manual in there and your CD with the game art on the CD. And you had a CD, your own CD with your own game. And I started to collect them. And it was so nice to be around that kind of time where these consoles that started 3D games and virtual reality, you know, kind of like how I thought VR would be back then. And then I wasn't so frightened. And then I noticed I left the old consoles behind. I didn't really play them anymore. They just sat there gathering dust. That's why the PlayStation is my console of choice. It's why I've stayed with Sony all this time. I only have the PS1 Slim now, because yes, they made a PS1 Slim. So a thinner version, smaller, looked nice. I still preferred the older model though. Our PlayStation had the symbols, so it didn't say power and open on each button. It had the symbols, so it was a slightly newer model. I would like to go to friends' houses to see what model they had. When they had the CD interface, which was like blue and all bubbles, and mine wasn't. And you could play your music CDs on it. And that's where you would notice on some games you could listen to the game's sound effects or soundtrack in the CD player of the PlayStation. And we had memory cards where we would save our data. So we would play these games, they were longer, some of them harder. You would get to love the character and know the character and develop a sense of fear and care for this character. You would start to age playing some of these games. I know I did playing Resident Evil 2 and Tomb Raider 2 and 3. I started getting older while playing them, a lot of emotions around them times, especially being a teen. But I still came back to them. It's like now, if I go back to a PlayStation, I can think, oh, this is so nice. And although I only own the PS1 Slim, I have a PS2 Fat and a PS3, which essentially have a PS1 on them. The PS2 Slim I had issues using my memory card on them, and I think that you can't on the PS2 Slim. But to me, I would say it's the, the start of gaming. The real start of gaming. When it was scary, expensive, aimed heavily at adults, but you got one. And it changed a lot, for you and gaming anyway. Now like I said, this was going to be a bit of a weird random stories, because it's not about a particular game, it's just something that was on my mind, I thought I'd grab the laptop and just say a load of things that were on my mind. And I might have forgotten some stuff, I always tend to, because I don't script these. I stick my laptop on, and I put Audacity on, and I press record as I'm talking. And I talk to the mic, and whatever's at the end, I add the footage to it. And that's all I do, that's all I've ever done. The PlayStation, the music, the feelings, the console, the friends, the memories. It's all here to stay, and it's a good thing. I love the PlayStation 1. Please. Please let me know some of your experiences, some of your memories. I'm really interested. As you can tell, I'm sort of obsessed about this stuff. And as I'm getting older, I'm thinking about it more. You know, it's, it's starting to really make me think now. And I'd like to know what you thought. You know, what did you first play? How did it feel when you finally had in your possession a PlayStation 1 console? Well, I hope you enjoyed this weird random stories. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Bye.